Hello, this is Sean with another quick hit. Uh, just my wife and I just finished going through all the light we cannot see. Did I get that correct? Yes, all the light we cannot see. It is a marvelous Netflix uh, series, uh, and it makes me want to talk about plot. Uh, so here's the deal with plot. Um, uh, plot has a certain form. It has an if, uh, order in which things go. All good stories go in this order, despite the fact that people say, oh, no, we're being edgy. Our story doesn't. The good ones actually do. You, you start with a hook. Uh, maybe you've got yourself your balance. Uh, you unbalance it with a catalyst. You have a, a big event that pushes them on the journey. You have a first part of the quest. You have a midpoint. You have a second part of the quest. You have a crisis. You have a climax. You have a new balance. Uh, and maybe you have a tag. That happens in all stories in that form. Now, the thing is, is when you get a story that has plays with time, uh, where you're not telling it in chronological order, everybody gets all goosebumply and saying, oh my goodness, we took structure and we broke it. Uh, we changed the structure. Um, no, you haven't. <laughs> so here's the thing in the problem with structure is that people like me, professors and, and teachers, we teach it wrong. We teach structure from the point of view of the characters. We say, uh, you know, first uh, we have the character's normal world and then something happens that throws the character out of whack. So the character goes on a journey to fix it. It's a very simple, easy way to understand story, and it's going to be helpful for most stories, but it really is not how story is told. So we have to go back to Aristotle. Aristotle talks about plot versus story. Story is everything that happens. Plot is the writer's choice of what to tell and in what order to tell it for an audience. And that's the key part is the for the audience, not for the characters. So something like Memento that is not told in time doesn't take the plot, uh, doesn't take the you know balance and then the unbalance and then the quest and rearranges those pieces. Uh, what it does is it takes the story and puts those pieces in an order that still gives you hook, balance, catalyst, uh, big event, quest in that order as the audience experiences it. So plot is the order in which the audience experiences it, and uh, virtually every story that has been successful tells it in the same order. So one of the ways to try to think about this when you're looking at a story that is, is not in time, or even a story that bounces from character to character, uh, is when you get good at this, you start to feel your way through a story. You can feel yourself being hooked you can, as an audience. You can feel there's like, okay, now I, I think I have a grounding of where this story uh, is starting. You feel an unbalance. You feel a pressure to, oh, we got to move the story forward. How are we going to solve this story? Uh, we, you feel uh, the midpoint, everything, oh my goodness, everything has just changed. You feel the crisis, right? Uh, starting to get more obvious, right? Because we all feel the crisis. You feel the climax. Anytime you hear a writer who writes really good stories, who says, I don't worry about plot, I don't pay attention to plot, it's because they're feeling their way through it, because the way you tell it is how is the feeling of experiencing it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, a good one to try this out on is All the Light That We Cannot See beautifully structured stories and uh, plays with time, especially as the episodes increase, we cut back and forth uh, and, into, into flashbacks, jumping back to uh, earlier, four months earlier, uh, a little bit ahead, you know, all that kind of jumping, but you still feel it. So as you're watching this, see if you can feel yourself through it of... Oh, as an audience member, the first thing that I'm feeling is a hook, right? Which is usually the cliffhanger from the episode before. It picks up on the cliffhanger. And it's like, oh, no, is he going to get into the room? Is she in danger, right? That's your hook. And then it kind of backs up and it gives you a, oh, uh, you know, four months earlier, here's here's where the situation started. And then something happens that throws that out of whack. And we might jump ahead back into the normal time for how am I going to deal with the guy, the fact that the guy's trying to come through the door, right? That's quest, right? But then something happens that changes everything. And that might be in the middle of the the story. That might be your midpoint, which might be in the past. It might be in the back uh, when, when there's the fire in the house, uh, for those who, uh, who who have watched a bit of it, right? Um, you're feeling it way through. You know what the crisis moment is. The all is lost. You know what the climax is, and you're experiencing those all in the order in which you're watching it, but not necessarily the order in which the characters are experiencing it. So all the light we cannot see, marvelous miniseries, wonderful plotting, Great acting, great direction. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, and it's a great way for you to see, oh, I don't have to look at plot in terms of the character order. I just need to look at it in the order of the audience. Anyway, that's been another quick hit.